Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back. I really appreciate you stopping by. Today I am very excited to share my latest pickup with you guys. And I have a lot I want to say about this card. So I'm just going to jump right in. I'm going to show the card and then I'll flip the camera around, give you a better look and talk a little bit more about it. So here it is. It's a 1929 JBR 67 Japanese issued bromide. And it is a historical photo there of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. You can see Babe Ruth there standing on the car. And this is Lou Gehrig standing next to him. And so just super happy to have this card in my collection. I don't like to throw around the word rare loosely, but I'm willing to bet that 99% of the people that see this video have never seen this card before. In fact, Across SGC and PSA both, there's only been 28 graded. And I've only, in the in all of YouTube, I believe this card's only been shown twice. And both of those times were by Robert over at Prestige Collectibles. And in fact, Robert has a great video out about this set. So if you're interested in learning about this set, check the link in the description. Go check out Robert's video. And in fact, go check out Robert anyway, especially if you have interest in Japanese baseball cards, because Robert definitely is an expert on that subject. Um, so I saw this card, never saw it before, definitely was interested in it right off the bat. You know, one of the things I love about collecting vintage cards is having a chance to add rare and hard to find cards into the collection, cards that you've never seen before. Of course, I, I like to collect Japanese cards, and I also like to collect um, Hall of Famers and cards of the game's greatest players. And so this card kind of fits the bill for both of those, being a Japanese issue and being that two of the game's greatest players are depicted here. So started negotiation. It was like a two-week negotiation with the seller to buy this card. Um, I couldn't find any comps. I typically use 130point.com. Um, they give eBay sold listings plus a handful of other major auction houses. Unfortunately, they don't have all the major auction houses, so I couldn't find a comp for this. Um, I ended up consulting with a what I would consider a Babe Ruth expert, Rick over at Vintage Oddball Cards here on YouTube, trying to ask him you know, what he thought this was worth. And he actually found a comp for an SGC3 that sold at REA Auctions several months back. And what the seller was asking for this, the, the SGC3, which I don't, I, I could care less about this number. I'm just thrilled to have this card. I think it's a, I almost consider it to be like a piece of history. But um, the SGC3 that sold at REA basically had a comparable eye appeal as this one the only difference being is there's a little crease right here and that one didn't have the little crease right there but the overall eye appeal the image the clarity was pretty much exactly exactly very similar to what this is so you know the seller was asking about 40 percent more for this than what rea sold the three for back in may so based off the comp that rick found i you know, went back to the seller and I explained to him, you know, what the the only comp was that I could find. And the seller was, you know, he was honest. He said, you know, I, I know I'm my price is aggressive, but I feel because of the rarity and because it has Babe Ruth in it, um, I think I'm going to get close to what I'm asking for. So I tried to make a trade. I offered a couple of one big card and another pretty good card and some cash and he just felt he wanted more, and I felt like he was asking too much, so I just left it at that. And then 11 days later, the seller messaged me, and he gave me an offer that was right around the comp that I got from REA Auctions. So at that point, you know, when you buy a card on REA Auctions, you're paying a buyer's premium, typically at least 10%. You're also gonna pay sales tax and their shipping fee. And this guy was giving me an offer that was around the selling price 
minus all those other things. So I, I thought it was a fair offer and I definitely wanted the card. Uh, it took me a couple of days. I got the, the cash up and, and here it is. So I want to give a big thanks to Rick again for helping me out with that, finding a price for this. And um, it just really worked out. So let me spin the camera around. I want to give a closer look and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the card. Okay, so here's a better look at this card. You can see that this was hand cut, as it says there. You can see the dotted lines there going across the side and the top. This was cut from a sheet of four cards. This card was the only card from the set that depicts baseball players. So this was the bottom right-hand corner, so that's why you don't see the dots along these, the bottom and the side here and then there would have been another card above it another card on the side of it and then another card above that so there were four cards to the sheet and just an awesome awesome photo there a famous photo that i'm going to talk about in a minute but here on the front of the card it, i'm going to loosely translate it says who is the king of the world and then we'll take a good look at the back you can see ruth there with the hat in his hand, and then alongside him here is Lou Gehrig. So let me flip it over. This is what the back looks like. Again, I will loosely translate what it says. It says, the world's best batting king. There is no one who doesn't know the name of the batting king, Babe Ruth, along with the president of the United States. The year before last, he hit 60 home runs in New York. He shocked the world with his home run, and last year, the New York Yankees defeated the Cardinals in quick succession, and it was all thanks to his power that they were able to dominate the league. His annual salary of $70,000 and the 300,000 letters he receives from fans every year speak volumes about his popularity and talent. The photo shows Ruth being mischievous as he heads off to a game. So you can see there's two of the game's greatest players depicted here on the card. But the Japanese just absolutely love Babe Ruth. And, you know, there's not a single mention of Lou Gehrig here on this card. So there's that. Now, the photo, I'm just going to, this photo was basically, you can see on the license plate there, below the, the horns, it's hard to see, but it says Rodeo Roundup. And so this was kicking off a bondstorming tour that Ruth and Gehrig started after the 1928 World Series. So I'm just gonna read an article I found about this actual photo. So this is all in quotes here. Fresh off a four to zero sweep of the St. Louis Cardinals, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig decided they weren't quite done with the World Series. A reported 22,000 fans gathered at Dexter Park in Brooklyn on October 12, 1928 to watch Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig kick off their bondstorming tour with a game against the Bushwick All-Stars, a semi-professional team. To the crowd's surprise and probably delight, the pair appeared on the field prior to the game in cowboy outfits. But Ruth did better than that, just donning the outfit. He came onto the field and after mounting a police officer's horse, proceeded to race it around the field like a buffalo bill. After returning the horse, Ruth sat, sat astride the hood of a car fitted with long stair horns, twirling a lasso and waving to the crowd until it became too warm. Standing alongside him was his trusty partner, Lou Gehrig, smiling for the crowd. The pair were photographed between second and third base, tipping their hats to the fans as players, press, and children dressed in rodeo attire converged on them. Ruth's pregame antics continued on the field where he carried a pen on his hip. The Bambino not only signed the baseballs being continually thrown on the field, but he even autographed one while protesting an umpire's call. 
One fan even had Ruse sign a towel that he was using to wipe perspiration off his face. While it is evident that Ruth and Garrig didn't mind hamming it up for the camera, for example, an image of Garrig plugging his ears while Ruth played the saxophone, there was a worthy cause behind the two's decision to put on a show. If you look below the horns in a photo from the day, there's a small advertisement for the World Series Rodeo. An event to be held at Madison Square Garden from October 23rd to November 1st of that year. Captions on the back of similar photographs indicate that the money raised by the World Series Rodeo benefited the Broad Street Hospital, known today as New York Presbyterian Hospital, Lower Manhattan Hospital. The annual rodeo supported the hospital's charity work in the crowded tenements of the, the east side. Garrig and Ruth advertising stunt supported a good cause, likely softening the blow of losing their barnstorming opener. The Bushwhack All-Stars may have defeated Ruth's All-Stars 9-6 to six that day, but as one newspaper described it, it was strictly a Ruthian show from the time the boys started practicing until both the Bambino and Buster batted out of turn to please the folks in the ninth. While Ruth wowed the crowd with numerous long fouls, Garrig was the one who hit a homer that day, socking a ball that ricocheted off one of the houses behind the right field fence. It was the first and only game of the tour, which ran until the end of November, where the pair would play on the same team. Whether they won or lost, Ruth and Garrick always knew how to put on a show. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you tuning in for this one. Um, just really love this card. Really am so thrilled to have it in the collection. Talk to you all soon. Bye for now.